mouth to lung rebuildable tank atomizers. That's my smug face. Well, it's not so much smug face, it's my happy face because never has there been, at least since 27, well, not even 2017, at least until 20, since the end of 2016, never has there been as much choice for mouth to lung rebuildable tank atomizer fans. There has been a literal plethora of these tanks being released, not to the stage of the market being oversaturated, but to the stage that mouth to lung tank users on the rebuildable market now have a damn good choice. This is from a company that I never heard of until two months ago. It's Kizoku, makers of the tech mod, the side-by-side -side mod with really clean looking lines, and more importantly, makers of the Unlimit rebuildable tank, which is kind of the poor man's version of the Fatality M25, with flavor almost, or in some cases, as good as the Fatality M25. Now they're making a mouth to lung tank. They're like checking all the boxes of what makes an e-cig company, an e-cig company. They've got the mouth to lung market wrapped up. They've got the direct to lung market wrapped up. They've got the side by side market wrapped up. They've got one thing missing, a single and dual battery, normal top five, 10 plate mod. And I've got a feeling they'll probably release one of those soon, probably before Christmas. But today we're concentrating on this. This has got a very long name though. This is the Kizoku Renaissance Limited Edition Limit Mouth to Lung RTA. It's basically a limited edition of the Limit Mouth to Lung tank because it's got engravings and stuff in the top of it and the normal one does it. Anyway, how does this thing perform? Only one way to find out, but before we do find out, let's have an up close and personal for this tank review. So I don't normally do the unboxing during the table cam now because that's usually done at the very beginning of the video for the intro, but we're looking at Kizoku again. And the one thing you've got to hand it to Kizoku for is the presentation for this particular variant of the Limit Tank. This is the Renaissance Edition, and it's a limited edition run of this particular mouth-to-lung tank from Kizoku. If we open this up, look at that. Look at that, there we go, nice presentation package. So what we've got here is we've got the main tank, as you can see, you've got the spare top cap, the build deck, the spare glass tube, your coil, and the accessories and tool bag in here. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna pull out all the stuff that's gonna be interesting to everyone watching this review. Pop all this to side, no, we don't need that actually, but we are gonna need this, and we're gonna need this. Just accessories and a spare micro coil in here folks so let's pop that to one side and what we're going to have a look at is the tank as it comes as standard not with this now it says glass it's not actually glass it's polycarbonate acrylic plastic that's what it is but what we have here is the renaissance edition tank as standard starting at the very top you do of course have your 510 drip tip that's double o-ringed filling the tank is easy you basically unscrew this top locking ring here, give it a push, and there's your fill port there with the little valve rubber seal thing going on. Then you push this back over, screw this back down, and that locks the, the, the top fill port back in place. You have got your Renaissance Edition carving along the top. There's the Limit logo there, as you can see. Then you've got the main glass section of the tank, plus the coil holder in there. And then down here at the base, you do of course have your fully adjustable, Airflow control. So that's it fully open, and if we spin this round, that's it fully closed, and there's no click stop. It is actually fully adjustable. Down here at the base, you've got Kizoku, don't vape in a bin, and the serial number. If we have a look at what's going on inside the tank, there's the actual mount. So if you're going to be using this as a stock coil mouth to lunger, this is basically an Aspire coil. It's essentially what this is, except it's Kizoku's, it's Kizoku's own spin on the Aspire coil. So what you want to do is you want to open this little fella up. So it's just a case of cutting open the seal. So if, if, if you've got Nautilus coils, they will work. What is going on here with this thing? This is shrink wrapped. 
It is actually, it's shrink wrapped. They went to the trouble of shrink wrapping the individual coil. Wow. So let's just. And this is bloody thick shrink wrap they've got in this. There we go, finally. It's like the damn Krypton factor trying to unseal the coil. Seriously? Eventually I'm gonna get this fucker out of the plastic, that's it. <laughs> So there we go, we've seen these coils plenty of times folks, it's basically an Aspire Nautilus coil but it's, be it's Kizoku's own, own take on it. This will screw into the base of the tank like that. Top screws on like that. And there you go, you've got a pretty damn good stock coil because it's basically using an Aspire Nautilus coil. You've got a pretty damn good stock coil mouth to lung tank. However, if you are a fan of rebuilding, you can also rebuild on this. So we, pick, we take the base back off, take the Nautilus coil back out, and what we have here is what is essentially an older style K-Fun deck with slightly raised posts. So we get the deck here, we screw this on like that. There we go. And as we pop this in, what we are going to see... Now, hold on, keep an eye, in fact, I'm going to zoom this in, keep an eye on that O-ring, see that O-ring that you're seeing there, because that's the O-ring at the base of the actual build plate, and I'm going to screw this deck in, and you'll see that O-ring raise up, and then hit the main chamber to cause a seal, and what you're seeing now is the base of the build deck where your cotton is going to stick out. It's a very interesting design that Kazoku have done with this because there's juice intake holes going all the way around the base of that chamber, which means the base of the deck is going to get a lot of e-liquid. So, wicking on this is going to be very important that you don't underwick it, otherwise you'll flood the deck out. Talking about the deck, let's pop a coil on this. Steve Dilligaff, Porter, Steampunk Base, Piston at a stand. You will pop this on here. Now, has this raised this too close to the... It probably has. No, no, it hasn't. Right, I'm going to switch off the autofocus so the focus doesn't drift all over the damn place. There we go. Nothing fancy is going in here, folks. So it's just a simple, plain micro coil. Uh, eight, right, is that eight or nine? Eight wraps of 035 millimeter Canthal A1 uh, wrapped around the 2.5, uh, the 2.5 millimeter coil master. And where the hell did I put that damn screwdriver? There it is. But there we go, Point, uh, sorry, 1.4, it basically means I don't need to use as much power to get this thing to work. Wicking this, again, is going to be very, very simple. You've got two big juice wells on either side that you don't want to overstuff, but you do want to pop some of the cotton down into the actual juice intake. Now, this is a 25 millimeter. is it? Yeah, 25 millimeter coil, so I'm not going to need a lot of cotton for this. Let's just do that much. That should do it. So remember, the main chamber that you're seeing here has massive juice intakes, which basically means the base of this deck is essentially flooded. It's essentially flooded. So you're going to have to be very careful how you actually wick this. You need to make sure that all of the juice intakes, the juice intake here and the one on the other side has got full cotton coverage. So let's get the scissors out and we're going to leave about a centimetre of cotton on either side 
of that coil. So we're looking at that much, we're basically bow tying this. And now we need some of Les Pickens tobacco e-liquid. And did I bring that next door again? I bet I bloody did. Seriously? I'm sure I bought a couple of bottles in here. No, I didn't. Okay. I'm not going to use the peach custard with this because this is a mouth to lung tank, folks. So I'm going to have to drag my lazy rear end into the old studio next door. I was positive. Wow, it's like an oven in here because I left the heater on. I was positive I left a bottle of Les Pickens tobacco e liquid through there, but obviously I didn't. Close you. Close you. <sighs> this is what happens when you think you've left e-liquid bottles in your main studio and it turns out you haven't. So, what we are going to do here, we are going to wet the wick first before we drop these down. So we're going to pop a little bit of liquid straight onto the coil. Give the coil a very quick burn in. Perfect. Then we're going to wet the wicks. Just paint it on. Give the wicks a good saturation. And now what we need to do is go in with the tweezers and we're going to lift the cotton up and push the base of the cotton or the bottom of the cotton in towards the coil. And then we're going to get the rest of the cotton to follow suit. So you're not forcing the cotton down but you're basically, you're basically damming up the top of the juice intake with a lot of cotton, which then puts a lot of pressure on the underside of the cotton to fall through that juice hole intake down there at the bottom. And with all that cotton resting on top, partial dam method basically, just with a lot more cotton than you should use for the partial dam method, with all that cotton resting on top, it means that the pressure inside the tank will not unplug the juice intake and flood the deck out. This is why dam methods are very tricky to do. Hold on. This is why dam methods are very tricky to do when it comes to mouth to lung tanks because mouth to lung tanks, because of the pressure that you're putting on the inside of the tank, the vacuum on the inside of the tank because of the very tight draw, a normal dam method, the cotton ends up lifting up just completely lifting up and leaving the juice intake exposed so you end up with a flood. So a dam method like this, that's using a lot more cotton than you should do, puts a lot more pressure on the underside of the cotton down here, down here, because all this cotton on the top is trying to push the cotton down because you've folded the underside of the cotton in and it also stops, it also stops the cotton lifting up. And also, what it means, because you've got a lot more cotton than you should have on either side of the coil, the cotton here is saturated on either side, which means you get a very saturated vape. Now, this style of wicking only really works for this style of deck with large juice intake holes on either side, but... It also has to be a raised style deck as well, which is what this is. It's basically a GTA style mini deck they've got going on in here. So we're going to pull this off. In fact, no, no, we're not. We're going to give this one last fire. That's looking good to me. We're going to pull this off. And then we are going to get the main tank section here, give the whole thing a little wiggle to let the cotton run through, and then we're going to screw the base on. And what you'll be seeing is the base screwing up, and it's clear of cotton, and that's what we're looking at. Unscrew this to unlock it, push this over, and then we're going to get our juice bottle and of course older style gorilla bottle 
thinner style juice intake, so I'm going to have to fill this up before we head back up to the cam. I've got this decanted into an older style Gorilla bottle to actually fill the thing up. This is why I'm not a fan of this juice in, uh, of this juice fill hole type, especially for older style bottles like this. Anyway, back up to me again. And we're back up top with the Kizoku Limit, uh, Limit Renaissance, no, hold on, the, this is a long name for this tank, right? The Kizoku Limited Renaissance Edition Limit Mouth to Lung RTA, not to be confused with the Kizoku Unlimit Direct to Lung RTA. The, the name of this and the name of the direct to lung tank is very, very close. This is the Limit RTA, and that dual airflow, kind of poor man's version of the M25 that I looked at a couple of weeks ago from Kizoku is the Unlimit. Don't get the two of them mixed up, they're completely different tanks. So here we go, airflow on the Limit is fully open, running this at 14 watts because the coil is 0.13 ohm, not 0.13, the coil is 1.3 ohms and we're off. a little bit too airy for my liking. Let's close this off. Halfway, three air holes open. Mm, that's a lot better. Okay, one air hole open. That's a bit on the tight side. And there we go. That was the Kizoku Limited Renaissance Edition Limit Mouth to Lung RTA. From now on, I'm going to call it the Limit. Right, so what do I think of this? The eyes and the nose. I can't find anything wrong with this. I honestly cannot find anything wrong with this. Now, the wicking style, the deck style for the juice intake holes is very unusual for a mouth to lung tank. They've went with huge juice intake holes in this thing, which they didn't have to do, to be honest. Now, the bigger the juice intake hole, the more cotton you have to use in the coil. So when you're, so when you're, when you're wicking on this, you're gonna have to be careful about how you place the cotton. You can't go for a full damn method of just having the cotton resting on top of the hole because the, the juice intake hole's too big. I don't know why they made it that big, but they have. I suppose the argument could be made that a lot of, a lot of high nicotine content juices that you tend to get on store shelves like VPZ are totally wicked. A lot of these companies are moving away from 50-50. They're starting to move away from 50-50 and they're going with 60 or 70 VG base for their, for their 18 milligram nick based starter kit juices because a lot, well not a lot, basically all of these stock coil mouth to lung starter kit tanks are now able to handle 70 VG juice. So they're starting to move away from 50-50 and I'm guessing that's why, that's why Kizoku went down the road of putting very large juice intake holes on the deck of this tank for the people that want to use max VG juice. That's probably why they done it. But with those bigger juice intake holes, because it's mouth to lung, you're not going to be using a lot of cotton, a lot of cotton, because the coil is going to be tiny because it's mouth to lung. So it's going to be a tricky one to wick. It's going to be a tricky one to wick. And I'll be honest, that's the only negative point I've got with this. The good points, easy to coil on. It's a super easy deck because it's basically a semi-rendition of the old style K-Fun deck they've got going in this. The airflow control simply works. One air hole open is one air hole open and an Aspire Nautilus 2. Three air holes open kind of matches up to the Aspire Nautilus 2. Three air holes open in that. Fully open, a little bit too airy for me, but it's like the Aspire Nautilus 2 with three air holes open. They've kind of matched it airflow to airflow with the Nautilus 2 airflow, which I think is a good thing. The overall look of the tank, now this is the limited edition Renaissance. The normal edition Kizoku Limit RTA does not have the engraving on the top. It's a completely different looking tank. If, although if you do manage to see the limited edition run of this in its big box, I would go for it because it's actually quite a nice looking tank. 
with the, with the carvings and engravings going on at the top of this thing. But as mouth-to-lung tanks go, I don't have any complaints with this. I honestly don't. It is in the realm of the taller mouth-to-lung tanks currently out on the market. It is a rather tall tank for a mouth-to-lunger, but it's not the tallest tank that I've seen. I mean, the um, uh, the Ion V2, the Expromiser V4, the Penada, they're all still taller than this tank, but I would still class it as a taller mouth-to-lunger. I would. Now, here's the big question. The flavour. The end of this year is approaching very fast. We are now in October. The next thing we know is going to be the beginning of December, right? I am going to have a very hard time picking out the best mouth-to-lung tank of 2020. I can tell you that right now. There has been a large number of mouth-to-lung tanks being released this year. And right now, and it includes this, it includes this, Right now, I can't tell them apart when it comes to flavour. I honestly cannot tell them apart. Now, I am using, I'm, I'm doing preliminary, I'm getting prepared for the test that I'm going to be running at the very end of November for the best mouth-to-lung tank of 2020, because that's going to be the problem category. It's going to be the problem category. I've got practically all of the mouth-to-lung tanks of this year lined up in the old studio next door. I've got them all, all with mouth to lung, low density, medium complex coils from proper coils. And I'm gonna be doing the same with this once this review's finished. I'm gonna be taking out the round wire coil and I'm gonna be putting a mouth to lung fuse clapton, I think it is, yeah. I think it's a mouth to lung low density fuse clapton in this to match up with the other fucking seven tank with six or seven tanks that I've got next door and I'm going to try and break it down into a top five. That's what I'm going to try and do next week, break down those tanks into a top five and I can say that's going to be the group that I'm going to be looking at at the end of November and I can tell you now this is probably going to be in that top five because the flavour from it is spot on absolutely spot on but then again i've said the same thing about most of the other mouth to lung tanks on the market in 2020 that's the problem that mouth to lung vapors and the rebuildable tank atomizer market are now facing it is getting very very difficult to separate these tanks out now because the flavor profiles out of all these tanks are very closely matched very closely matched I will give this tank one thing though. It's probably the best looking mouth to lung tank out there because of what's going on up here with the engraving with the Renaissance edition. Anyway. I mean, I've got less pickings, but one's this. Organic burly, it's the last. I'm actually running out of this stuff. I've got less pickings organic burly in here and it is fucking phenomenal. Just the flavour from it is phenomenal flavour from this thing. And there we go. That was... I need, to, I need to do the full name again, don't I? That was the Kizoku Limited Edition Renaissance... No, sorry. The Kizoku Renaissance Limited Edition Limit Mouth-to-Lung RTA. Basically, it's the Kizoku Limit mouth-to-lung tank, right? Again, don't get it mixed up with the Unlimit tank, which is the, the direct-to-lung one that I used. The, the mouth-to-lung one's the Limit RTA. The direct-to-lung one is the Unlimit RTA. Don't get them mixed up. Completely different tanks, folks. But again, if you do find the limited edition Renaissance variant of this, get your hands on it, because that is a really nice-looking tank. The whole engraving stuff that's going on up there at the top, they've done a good job in this. They've done a really good job in this. Anyway, mm, that is the last of the Kizoku items that I'm looking at because right up until now, I think they've got one, I think they've got a new thing that got released last week that I haven't got my hands on yet. But again, for a new company, these guys only showed up about two months or three months ago. 
They've come out with a damn good side-by-side -side mod. They've come up with a direct-to-lung tank that can hold its own against the Fatality M25. And they've come out with a damn good mouth-to-lung tank that's more than likely going to be in the top five of this year. For a new company, they know what they're doing, which is why I still have my sneaky suspicion that their designer is from another company. I've got a sneaky suspicion. Anyway, big thanks to Kazoku for sending the tank over for a review. If you thought this review sucked, you know what to do down below. Thought it was good, give it a thumbs up. Very fast at the top, you've got the latest video, no matter what video you're watching on the channel. I need that latest What's Up Sunday update vlog in the middle. Shout, shout, shout out to the hashtag Floof Army, the Patreon subscribe stars and the YouTube members that are supporting Beat Me Back financially. That's what's paying for this studio. And underneath me is the Beat Me logo. Click on that to subscribe. As always, folks, thanks for watching and have a good one.